us from Nairobi. Well, yesterday on the program, you'll remember the breaking news that we brought you on the sentencing of the hotel manager, whose story of his saving lives during the 1994 Rwandan genocide was made into a Hollywood film, Hotel Rwanda. Paul Rusesa Bagina was handed a 25-year sentence for terror-related charges. He is now a prominent opposition activist. He was arrested in Rwanda last year. His family have called the trial a sham. So let's talk now to Mr. Rusesa Bagina's daughter, Karine Kanimba, who joins us now from Brussels. What a 24-hour period you and your family have been through. I know you were expecting this verdict but explain to us how this period has been for you and why you feel it was a sham trial. Well, thank you. First, thank you for having me on the show, Lucy. Um, in this past 24 hours have been very difficult on our family, but we're not discouraged. Um, the verdict means nothing to us because our father is a political prisoner. Um, as you know, he was kidnapped last August and dragged across, across international borders in violation of international law without legal extradition. And then he was tortured for four days in the Rwandan torture house. And then he was denied all of his most basic human rights, including his rights to his chosen legal representation. And then he was held in solitary confinement for over 250 days. And that is another violation of the Nelson Mandela rules um, because it amounts to psychological torture so there was no fair trial. My father has not been treated fairly. Um, this is President Kagame who wants to silence my father. Karine, how is your father? How is his health? His health is not good. Um, he's already, he went through both physical and psychological torture. He's a 67 year old man who is a cancer survivor and has missed two cancer screenings thus far. Um, he has not received his medication that was sent to him via the diplomatic, the Belgian diplomatic suitcase. Um, the Rwandan government have refused to give him his meds. Um, and he hasn't, he feels dizzy, he feels weak. We're very worried for him, uh, for his health, but emotionally he remains strong and he remains um, principled and calm and kind as he has always been. The Rwandan government has said that he did have a fair trial. They denied these allegations that he was kidnapped. What are your expectations now though of the international community, the fact that your father is a Belgian resident as well? So my father is a Belgian citizen and an American U.S. resident. Um, the American Bar Association and the Clooney, uh, found, uh, Clooney Foundation for Justice monitored the trial closely, and they also um, validated this the, this fact that the, he, my father did not receive a fair trial. He didn't even have access to his lawyers or the case file against him. So there's there was nothing fair about this trial. The Belgian Minister of Foreign Affairs yesterday made a statement saying also condemning this trial and saying that my father's rights to a fair trial have been completely violated. In the U.S., the U.S. Congress sent a letter to President Kagame asking him to let my father go and um, bringing up the relationships between both countries that are, is at, that are at risk if this if illegal detention continues. The U.S. Congress also sent a letter to Secretary Blinken asking him to use all diplomatic means at his disposal to bring my father back to the United States. So there are many people across the world that are speaking. Now we hope and we also know that the EU last week said they were considering sanctions against Rwanda. So in, more and more people are increasingly distancing themselves from Rwanda. And I think the Rwandan government is realizing that they made a terrible political calculation by kidnapping my father, torturing him, making him go through a sham trial, and then now attempting to silence him forever. And Karine, have you been concerned about your own safety throughout this period? Absolutely, I have. And the Amnesty International Security Lab discovered last month that my phone had been infected with the Pegasus software. They conducted a forensics analysis that showed that since January of this year, they have been continuously following and tracking my every move, intercepting my communications, including the ones with the Minister of Foreign Affairs, the Belgian Minister of Foreign Affairs. Um, so they can follow me anywhere. They know where I live. They have broken into my home, into my father's home before. Uh, so I do do not feel safe and we know that they're cap <clears throat> what they're capable of. I mean, they've kidnapped my father and tortured him, so there's nothing that says that they wouldn't do this to me. And briefly, Karine, have you been surprised over the years the response that people around the world have had to the movie, to Hotel Rwanda and the impact it had? Yes, and the movie was meant to be a lesson for the world that 
they must not remain silent in the face of injustice. They must not remain silent when they see um, things, atrocities happening, human rights violations happening. And that is exactly what my father has been doing for the past 20 years. And since the movie was released, was to try to raise, to bring attention to those types of issues and, and encourage action among the youth and among the leaders of our world to take action and to take a stand in the face of injustice. And that is exactly why he's in prison today. And unfortunately, he also had to be a victim of this dictatorship for the world to finally pay attention.